my name is Alberto Ruiz. I'm a senior here at Palo Alto High School and I'm from San Jose. I never thought I'd be a captain, like, first, like honestly. On the football field, we have like our own social group. Like before we really start practice, we do like our little dynamic warm ups. It's weird because on the left side are all white and on the right side are all minorities. I just like leaned toward like the minorities. Like I, I don't know, like I don't really agree with what like some of the players have to say. I like, I don't like, like the subjects they're talking about because like I can't relate to it. When we're like all together, we're all friends. Uh, I mean, we're all like we all talk to each other. So like I, I personally prefer to like hang out with people I could connect with. And you don't think you can connect with? Uh, I can, just like uh, not as well. Yeah, not as well. I'm Brian Escarcega, and I'm a senior. Uh, I live in East Palo Alto. Um, I've been playing football my whole life. Most of the people here, like the minorities on my football team, I played with them when I was little. They they were on my uh, pop one in football. Team. How has it like been like a participant in it helped shape you? So like coming to paused. I mean, of... it's different because I have friends here, Paul Alto, and I also have friends there, East Paul Alto, and like the conversations that I have are totally different than I, the people I have here in the Palo Alto. Like, the culture, just, you can tell it's different because, like, well, first of all, like, Palo Alto is kind of, like, you know, high-end, and East Palo does not really like that, you know? Like, just seeing, like, just crossing over that bridge is different because, you know, the streets over there are bumpy and cracks, potholes everywhere, and then I come over here, here there's none. Like, I, I do feel, like, blessed because, you know, like, I can play at, at this level without kind of really having to pay. But, I mean, it's just something that also scares me in a way because, you know, if I don't make it to play college football, if I don't do any, any sports in college, like, I, I kind of feel like I let the people who let me be in that opportunity, like, down. And to be honest, like, if you look at the football team right now, there's minorities in it, but to be honest, I don't think there's enough. What I see is total cohesion amongst all the athletes. Uh, that's probably one of the the best parts about athletics is that people ultimately um, are able to be a part of a group based on what they do, you know, and who they are. Uh, if, if a kid shows up and works hard and gives good effort and is honest um, and, and is contributing to, you know, greater team success, they're going to be accepted. Tennis Palo Alto High School. And some of those groupings exist outside of the athletic space. Within the team, there's really good interaction between those athletes in that space. Would you want to see a greater mixing or greater integration and, and greater sharing amongst those, those athletes? Absolutely. And as a coach, it's my job to make sure that I'm having athletes, particularly on a team as big as a football team, to step outside of their comfort zone. Try to do is, is create opportunities for kind of equitable access. Um, we do team dinners here at the school right after school's practice so it doesn't it allows those guys to be there and it doesn't rely on a student having a car mm -hmm. you know to be there um, or having money to have access to it and that's what we're trying to do department wide is really create um, open access for every student who's interested in participating they know that no matter where they're from or who they are they have a fair chance of being part of this community. I think it has to be um, done intentionally, in, in by intentionally on the part of, of the coach or whoever's overseeing mm -hmm. that environment. Um, it's very easy to focus on the sport at hand, focus on the, the X's and O's piece, 
focus on the athletic piece. The, the social component isn't necessarily something that uh, coaches are asked to focus on. Football offers uh, 88 discrete opportunities to contribute um, to the team. So Asian, black, white, you know, you know, Latino, whatever, red, green, blue. If you show up and you want to work hard and you, you want to enjoy yourself, you, you come on out. Okay, how do you think it went? Uh, it went pretty good. Uh, our assignments uh, were completed, but uh, we had a little a little miscommunication sometimes on defense and, all, and on offense. Uh, but overall, we did pretty good. We're on to World Cup. How did you get hurt? How? Yeah. Um, it was during a Wilcox game here at home. Um, I was on defense, so this game I would play both ways since, since some of our players were injured. Um, I was a uh, defensive nose in the middle, um, and I just came rushing down, uh, down the field super fast uh, when basically I got hit on the side and my knee got caught in between two bodies and I got slammed down by a teammate uh, which made the situation worse um, which ended up tearing uh, two ligaments. And was that like in the middle of the season? Uh, yeah around there. Mm -hmm. And then how much longer like are you gonna have to cast on? Or like until, My brace? Yeah. Um, so about eight to ten weeks until um, my stability is better. Do you have to do physical therapy? Yeah, every Monday and every Wednesday. Oh, um, well, there were definitely coaches uh, still talking, um, but they, they didn't know the situation that I was in, so they didn't know I was injured. Um, so they just thought I was um, still playing. Um, but unfortunately, like, after I told them I got injured, they kind of like backed off, um, which was pretty tough, but I understood why. Most like communities, um, Colleges were still um, interested, uh, which is probably um, like something I would probably do. We prepare the way we plan doesn't change. Who we plan and prepare with does change. Um, so injuries kind of are expected, and you know you, you never want to see it happen. But you know you, you just follow the process and and let that guide you. Um, personally. You know, it, it has a deep effect on me because I care about those kids. I understand, you know, uh, high school athletics uh, is only for a limited period of time. And when kids get hurt and they lose those opportunities, you know, they can't get them back. I was class of 2019 and uh, I was a linebacker and I ended up getting injured my senior year. Um, so the first week of practice, I tore my hamstring and then I was out for a little more than half the season. And then the game, the second game I came back, I broke my foot and um, I couldn't, I, I shouldn't have been playing the rest of the season, but I ended up playing on that. Um, but because of that injury, I couldn't play to my best ability. How did that affect your chances of like being recruited for college? <laughs> Pretty much gone. <laughs> On a senior year is very important for recruitment. Um, and I just had no film for my senior year, so pretty much ruined it. The only route I could really take was like junior college um, and transferring out from there. That was, that was hard. Um, football was a big motivation for me to get through high school. Freshman and sophomore year, for me, the only reason I like cared about my grades was so I could play football. Junior and senior year, I realized there's more to life than football. And um, so yeah, it was just really hard because um, I always dreamed about playing at a D1 program and then there's nothing I could do um, about it. That was just taken away from me. So where do you go to school now? Foothill. But I'm going to go to CSM now that my physical therapy is over because they have a more competitive program. And um, 
the chances of getting recruited out of there are much higher. I didn't have any official offers, but I did have coaches reaching out, uh, local ones. Uh, I had an Ivy League reach out. So when you got injured, do you feel like supported by your coaches and team? Half the team understood my situation, the other half didn't. Um, since I was a team captain, a lot of people just expected me to play through my injury. And um, because the younger guys look up to me, I guess. And um, the other half, were, they are were like, don't play on your injury. You're going to ruin your chances of going on to a D1 program after high school. Um, but I kind of gave into that pressure of like playing on my injury because I got bashed on a lot, I guess, by half the team for not doing it. Or they said I wasn't man enough or tough enough uh, for football if I couldn't play with a broken foot. <laughs> and um, so yeah, I decided to play on it. One of the coaches, I'm not gonna name him, um, he kind of, he thought I was being soft for not playing on it, or he didn't believe like that my injury was as bad as I, I said it was. Um, so, you know, when a coach tells you you're being soft, you know, that means, I don't know, that hits you pretty hard. Of like, there was like a click of like the black kids on the team that all hung out together and like, you could see like after a touchdown, those are the kids celebrating with each other. And then if one of the white kids scored, like most of the time you see another white kid go and like high five and run whatever and celebrate with them. Those clicks, like, like not only were they like, like were they like the black kids on the team or like the Mexicans on the team, but like they were the only kids that had been playing football since they were like a toddler. And um, so those kids like hung out with each other and like everyone else who just started in high school like hung out with each other. So it was more than just like a racial like divide. It's like the kids that never played football before high school were kind of like ignored or like because they were seen as like not good enough. And um, I, I noticed that a lot, but so it wasn't so much of like one team, one unit kind of like dynamic going on. It was more, there was like, it was definitely really clicky. I was, ex I expected to get injured. I just didn't expect it my senior year. Senior year, I came in like <laughs> better than ever. And then first week of practice, um, you know, I lost the rest of my season. Did you feel like, coaches were trying to like get everyone to not click up as much? Not really. Um, I felt like they expected like the team captains to handle that. So we do like team bonding at the teammates house where everyone was invited. So like the teammates took care of that. Like the captains took care of that. Coaches didn't really have much involvement in that. school here has affected you positively more than negatively or uh yeah it's completely positive because I, th I think if I went to school over there I don't think I would be like passing my classes because here I felt more like a positive and vibe and like I can get more help and stuff like that. It feels kind of different sometimes because yeah there are more like white people here than over there in East Fall also. But like, I feel like coming to school here my whole life, or like in the PUSD, I've kind of like forgot what it feels like to be different because I felt nor like so normal here making friends and stuff like that. So I feel like right now it feels like a normal thing because everybody's not really treating me as like an outsider because I live in East Palo Alto coming to a Palo Alto school. They're just treating me like a normal student that comes to Palo Alto High School.